بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم One of the legacies of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is that we bring amal into our life. We bring taqwa into our life, living a life of taqwa, hayat taqwa. How do we get a life of connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Taqwa means the constant consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there's a very important section on in page 93 of this book. If anybody has it, I can read it to you. If you want to go along, you can go along. It's easier if I read it to you. The importance of having amal in your life. Let me tell everybody something. In your 24 hours day, who are you? You are your daily amal. What you do on a daily basis, this is you. It's not what you think. It's not what you feel. You understand a person might feel very Islamic, but he's clubbing all day. Okay? You will be judged based on what you do, not what you think, not what you feel. Understand this. Very, very important. It's not what you think. It's not about what you feel. It's about what you are doing from morning till evening. If from morning till evening you have a regimen, you have a tartib, that you are busying yourself, that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter where you are, the five daily prayers has become binding upon us. That no matter where you are, you are doing something that connects you to Allah. No matter where you are, it's constantly bringing you back to Allah. Constantly bringing you back to Rasulullah. Constantly bringing you back to the remembrance of Allah. You are what you do on a daily basis. So this is something very important. Everybody should know. What do I do on a daily basis? What, is, what am I constantly doing? I'm constantly on Facebook. Or I'm constantly on Twitter. Or I'm constantly on YouTube. How much Quran do you read on a daily basis? How, much, how long do we hold our phones in our hands? And how long do we hold the Mus'haf in our hand? How much do we make text messages? And how much do we read a book? Open a book and read it. This is, this is you. If you want to know who are you, this, you have to think about this question. You have to reflect over this question. And I know we're, mashallah, we're very busy, right? We're going around and seeing a lot of things. But take some time, sit aside and reflect, who am I? You are what you're doing in that 24 hours a day, seven days a week routine. Now somebody says, well, I have to work and I have to earn a living. No, that's, that's fine. But still, that is your necessity. When you come home, and when you sit on your couch, and when you're done with your work, that is who you are. That, that's your necessity. Say, well, you know, I have to go to the toilet, and I have to take a shower. Shower and toilet doesn't make you. Those are things you have to do with your necessity. I'm talking about what you do. What is it that you do? You know, I don't want to become a Geico commercial here, but you know, it says, you know, this is what, right? This is what, this is what they do. This is what a you know, skydiver does. He dives out of a plane. For example, you, know, you got to see, what is, this is what you do. What your hobby is, what your shagaf is, what your constantly concern is, what you're thinking about. Is your heart connected to the mud? That's why the Prophet ﷺ mentions that a person who is uh, one of the people who will be under the shade of Allah Ta'ala's throne is رَجُلٌ قَلْبُهُ مُعَلَّقٌ فِي الْمَسَاجِنِ that a person, no matter where he's at work, no matter he's at home, his mind is constantly, when will I go to the masjid next? When will I have the opportunity to sit in the, in, in the, in, in, in the company of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala next? This is a constant right, thing that you're constantly thinking about. So we might feel that we don't have time. But I wanted to read this so you all can kind of see what's the message here. So in this busy and stressful day and age, we find ourselves in a race against time to try to fulfill our obligations, no matter what it might be. Whether it's performing our five daily prayers, attending Juma, and then we rush back to work, or trying to recite some Quran, or gain some spiritual harmony, it seems like there's no time to do anything, right? Work and worldly responsibilities have, have consumed us to such an extent that they seem to dictate our very lives and define who we are. But the reality of the matter is that we do have time, we just need to manage our time. And the Prophet ﷺ said, "Inna dina yusrun, wa lan yushad the dina ahadun illa ghalabahu. Fasaddidu wa qaribu wa abshiru, wa sta'inu bil ghadwati wa rauhati wa shayi min al dulja." The Prophet ﷺ said that the dean is very easy, but whoever tries to overburden himself, you try to do everything, then it's going to become extremely difficult for you. You can't do every single thing of the dean. 
That's why Allah Ta'ala only made fard upon you five daily prayers. Allah Ta'ala did not ask you to do, you know, make a khatam of the Qur'an daily and perform tahajjud. No. The five daily prayers, Allah Ta'ala made it obligatory upon you. If you try to do every single thing and bring it upon yourself, right, then it's going to overwhelm you. So then the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what did he say? Try your best in this deen and receive good tidings that you'll be rewarded for everything that you do. Everything you do, Allah Ta'ala will reward you. For every step that you take to the masjid, Allah Ta'ala will reward you. And take benefit from your mornings, your evenings, and some portion right before the dawn. The Prophet says, I'm saying that manage your time. A little bit in the morning before you go to work. Who doesn't have time? Right? A little bit in the evening after you come back from work, and maybe some before dawn at tahajjud time. These are times everybody has time at these three times. In this hadith, the Messenger وسلم, is advising us to manage our time. He says that we should take that we should take aid or assistance from three specific times: the mornings, the evenings, and sometime before dawn. If we think about the busiest of schedules, we will notice that in the morning before we go to work, in the evening before we return, after we return. And just before dawn, these are times that everybody can spare a few minutes. If we have time for three meals a day, a coffee break, occasional chat, and we have time to make for five daily prayers, then we most definitely have a few time, a few minutes to, to spare for dhikr, our other prayers, recitation of Quran. It is not that we don't have time, we don't make time. So one thing that I highly recommend for people that are here, Try to put yourself on a regimen. Try to make some good habits. And when you create those good habits, try to implement that when you go back home. Have something. Have a regimen. Have a tartib.